Hey guys, Corey with Palmetto Battery Pros, and today we're going to be doing a lithium conversion on a 2014 EasyGo TXT. It is a 48 volt cart. We're going to be installing the Bolt Energy 51 volt, 160 amp hour lithium golf cart battery. And just real quick, I'll tell you what comes with the battery as far as the installation kit goes. You have your dash mounted voltage meter and wiring harness, mounting hardware for the voltage meter, and also your terminal hardware. It comes with a Bluetooth receiver and Bolt does have a Bluetooth app. So now we'll go ahead and discuss everything that comes in the installation kit. First off, you have your 110 volt uh, male plug and this will replace the old lead acid charge receptacle. It does come with a 22 amp onboard charger, your charger output wire which attaches to the eyelets here. The battery comes with an operator's manual with some stickers, some zip ties. There's some, just all kind of little goodies you might need in here. Uh, some eyelets for the 12 volt reducer, which the kit does include the 12 volt reducer. This is a really nice reducer. It's 30 amp, comes with the inline fuses. Here's your wiring harness. That's gonna be your 48 volt input and your 12 volt output. Bolt does include the uh, solenoid replacement. So this is a high output solenoid. It's 400 amp, 48 volt. Bolt includes brand new two gauge uh, main positive and main negative cables. These are the mounting brackets for the EasyGo TXT. And we will only be using one of these and we'll get into that here in a minute. And the last thing, Bolt does include some lead acid battery pullers. So as you get those old nasty lead acid batteries out of your cart, it's this uh, tool right here makes the job a lot easier. So the first thing we're gonna do is, and we've already done this and skipped ahead, but make sure your cart is in the off position. Make sure your cart is in tow. And the last thing we're gonna do to get this tray ready for the Bolt 160 amp hour battery is we are gonna not, we're gonna take these brackets off, the two vertical brackets. We're gonna shave those as level and flush with the center ridge as we can. All right, before we get the battery in, we're gonna go ahead and get everything else installed. So I've, I've kind of gone ahead and jumped ahead and installed everything from the installation kit. And I'm gonna give you a quick review on all of this. Uh, first of all, I took the onboard charger. I mounted it here on the uh, battery tray. It is very secure. We did use self-tapping screws, or I'm sorry, we did not bolt it down. So it's very secure there. We moved the customer's horn which is right here. It was over here, but we're gonna have to utilize every bit of space over here. So we did move that over for him. We mounted the 12 volt reducer using a three point connection and we self tapped it into the uh, frame here. And it is also very secure. And we have our wiring harness hooked up and we'll discuss that here in a minute when we go to hook it up to the battery. So now we'll go ahead and discuss the solenoid installation. And I went ahead and used the existing bracket, nut and bolted the solenoid to the bracket on one side of the post. And it doesn't matter which side um, we have our cable going to the solenoid. On the other main post here, you will install your bolt energy supplied two gauge main positive cable. And this will run to our battery bank, our positive post. And the rest of the solenoid is gonna hook up just like the old one came out. Uh, the yellow is your positive, the blue is the negative side here. And I'll try to give you a good shot, but on the diode, you'll see the, uh, there's a little stripe, there's a little gray stripe. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look, you can see that stripe. That needs to be on the positive side. So you definitely wanna make sure that that gets put in in the proper uh, place. All right, and when you're installing the solenoid in this TXT, especially using this bracket, make sure that your resistor is not pinched in the back here. Make sure it's up top and it's free. So after your solenoid's hooked up, you can go ahead and replace your B negative. So that was the main negative cable coming off the uh, battery bank and going to the controller. So you'll just find it down here on your controller and replace it with the bolt. It is a 13 mil. And once we have this installed and the batteries in place, uh, this will go to our main negative post. 
So the 160 amp hour battery from Bolt is pretty long. So we're gonna have to do some modifications to get this into the cart and mount it properly. And this battery will sit in this cart with the terminals facing the controller and the other end down here. And we're gonna be essentially using every bit of space in the battery compartment. Now, Bolt has been supplying the TXT bracket with this kit. With the TXT bracket, the holes would be a, about an inch, maybe two inches further this way in towards the driver's side. And what that does is it puts your mounting holes on this side, actually on the frame. And a lot of people or some people will remove the shell, but I do not want to do that. I thought there was a better way, so I actually used a different mounting bracket from Bolt. This is the Yamaha bracket, or they may call it the universal bracket. And what that does is it uh, allows me to bring the mounting holes on this side back, so I can put a direct nut and bolt it to this uh, metal frame here. These are the threaded holes that came with the bracket, but we did move the holes over a little bit to avoid this vertical strut in the battery tray. So we want it to sit over a little bit more. We did go ahead and notch out as flush as possible with the center ridge, uh, these vertical tabs in your battery tray. And this elevated part of the mounting bracket is above this. So the battery will sit down over this center ridge. All right, before we set the battery in, we're definitely gonna have to remove the old charge receptacle and to do that, I've already gone ahead and jumped ahead, of course, but uh, it is three Phillips head bolts, right? And then you'll pull the back of the receptacle out, which will be, you know, attached will be your, your main charging cables here. And also you'll find this small orange went to the charge receptacle as well. This is the reed switch bypass. It keeps the cart from operating while it's charging. So this needs to be energized. We're going to cut this maybe somewhere a little bit closer, put an eyelet on it, and that'll go to the main positive on our battery bank. So once you remove the back of the charge receptacle, you can go ahead and throw the old cables away. And then you'll come around to the front of the receptacle. These are rivets, and you'll need to drill the old rivets out to remove the old lead acid um, charge receptacle. I went ahead and dropped the battery into the battery tray and I have my holes lined up with the battery, ready to nut and bolt those into place. Now on this side, you'll notice that, and, it, and it's gonna be very hard to see down in there, but down here where the mounting feet are on the battery box, um, there's a gap. And what I have done is I'm going to shim that gap up with my nut and bolt. I have rubber uh, bushings here with the metal insert and I'm gonna use something like this. You could use washers, this anything to shim up that, you know, inch and a half difference down here on each of the feet. And there's just enough room now that we slid the battery back this way about an inch to two inches using this modified bracket for us to get our hand back there on both sides and, and get both feet nut and bolted down to that metal uh, tray right there. All right, so the bracket modifications, uh, they worked out so well. And luckily my measurements were on point, so we dropped the battery in and we're able to nut and bolt it down relatively easy. So here's this side, and I'll show you the underside of the driver's side here in a second. Here we go on the underside. This is under the driver. And you can see we have nut and bolt here. It's barely reaching the side of this plate, which makes it a lot easier. But uh, we did shim up. We put a shim right above this to s support the battery because there is a small gap. Uh, but we'll go ahead and tighten these down and we'll be ready to hook the battery up. Now that the battery is in place and tightened down, we can go ahead and put our charge receptacle in. So you'll run your female side into the battery tray and you will slide your AC port in place and the holes line up perfectly. And now we will go ahead and nut and bolt this to the frame. All right, once you have your charge receptacle completely bolted down, nut and bolted down, you will see that this is the female side. We're gonna 
go ahead and plug this in to the onboard charger input. So using the supplied input wire, go ahead and plug the back of the charge receptacle into the male side here. And then we will plug the female side into the charger using the small black uh, input wire. So we will go ahead and plug those in. And next we will hide the excess wire kind of back here in the corner, but we'll do some wire management and make this look good. So now that we have just about everything hooked up and in place, uh, let's talk about the 12 volt accessories. So this customer has a fuse block. It is right here. And I always recommend a fuse block if you have more than one accessory, if you have more than lights, go ahead and put a fuse block in. It makes it easier if you wanna add anything down the road, a sound bar, a USB port, whatever. So now we are going to make sure that everything's hooked up on the 12 volt supply. So go ahead and plug your wiring harness in. Uh, first, you have your main 48 volt supply. It comes with eyelets on it. We will run these to the positive and negative post on our battery. This will give us 48 volts input and that will put out via the red and blue 12 volts constant. Well, this is your 12 volt constant right here. This is gonna be uh, if you have a radio and you wanna maintain the uh, date and time, anything, any accessories like that, you'll run to your blue but your 12 volt supply is your red. And we went ahead and ran this red over to the fuse block and that will supply the fuse block with 12 volts. And we'll hook all of our accessories up to that. So next you have the light blue and this is going, we're gonna run this to the key switch. So when the key switch is off, the there's not gonna be any draw from the 12 volt reducer. We've gone ahead and run the light blue up to the key switch and the customer had, I guess, a radio right here. He removed it and created this panel right here. Luckily, the hole is a good size for the voltage meter. We'll talk about that here in a second. So in regards to the key switch, we did run the light blue up here. I think it turned to red somewhere along the way, um, but you can see we put it to the cold side of the key switch, which is with the white wire, and we put a splitter here, and this runs back to our reducer. Now we're gonna go ahead and hook everything up to our positive post. And we're gonna go from smallest to biggest in order with the biggest touching the post. So the smallest item we have is going to be our reed switch bypass that we cut from, it was the small on the back of the charge receptacle. We snipped it and put an eyelet on it and the other side runs to the controller. Next up is gonna be your 12 volt reducer input, 48 volt input. That's the yellow. After that, you'll hook up the brown, which is the positive, it is labeled, on the um, onboard charger connector. This will connect your battery to your charger. And the last thing that we will put to our positive post is the main positive cable. So these are 16 millimeter bolts, and you can go ahead and tighten those down once you have everything in place. And again, you want to get it tight, not too tight. You don't want to break the terminal, but you definitely do not want any wiggle room whatsoever. Next, we're going to go ahead and hook up our negative side. And from smallest to biggest, we have the negative for the 12 volt reducer. You have the negative for your onboard charger. And lastly, you have the negative that runs to your controller, the B negative. Okay, now let's go ahead and address the voltage meter. So take your voltage meter, create your hole wherever you want to on your dash. It is a two and one sixteenth hole saw, and that's kind of a hard side to size to find. So if you can find a two inch, maybe you can notch it out a little bit, uh, just a hair, and it's a nice snug fit. But go ahead and run your voltage meter wiring harness through your hole and into your dash and it's going to be hard to see but you can fish it through the dash up under here find some existing wiring harnesses and zip tie it along the way nice and secure out of the way along here and there's some uh, places in the frame that you can run the wiring harness through and then you'll fish it up through into the battery box 
and you will plug it into the center port here, which is called the display port. And go ahead and tighten that thing down. And we're gonna secure the voltage meter to the dash plate here. And uh, we will take the excess voltage meter wiring harness slack, we'll zip tie it together, hide it back in the dash and replace this panel. And it should look pretty good. And at this point, we have everything hooked up here on the cart. So we're gonna make sure we have cart operation. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we're in tow. We're gonna turn the battery on with the power button. So now the battery's on. We're gonna put the cart in run. We'll go ahead and turn the key switch to the on position. We have two clicks over, we have lights. So we'll just uh, put it in forward, gently hit the gas, make sure we have solenoid activation and the cart moves, which it does. So we are good to go. We're gonna go ahead and turn everything back off, put it back in tow. Turn the battery off and now we'll do the fun part which is some wire management and we'll try to make this tray look as good as we possibly can we'll zip tie using the bolt energy zip ties that they provide go ahead and connect your charger output to the onboard charge connector piece that you put to your positive and negative post and you're not going to get it wrong it only goes one way and it snaps right into place Next, there was another connection piece in your voltage meter package, and that is the Bluetooth connection piece. Go ahead and plug that into the BT port, which is Bluetooth. And I, you know, you can run your wire any which way. I usually will double side tape it to the top of the battery. It will pick up anywhere you put it, but uh, just secure it somewhere to the cart. I think it looks nice on top. And once you do that, you can go ahead and connect to the app. Bolt does have a Bluetooth app on iOS and Android. And I will show you right here what the icon looks like. Essentially, you can go on and check the health of the battery. Okay, this battery is at 51% capacity right now. So we're gonna go ahead and plug our heavy duty extension cord in. It will activate the onboard charger. And you'll see that the fan is running and this battery is charging. You can also tell on the voltage meter. But once it finishes charging, we're gonna take this thing out for a test drive. Okay, this stock 48 volt EasyGo TXT, we topped it out right here at 21, right over 21 miles an hour. So yeah, I think the customer is gonna be really excited about the speed, the lack of weight, how well it looks, and also uh, his range is gonna be out of this world. So I would say that he's gonna get every bit of 60, 65 miles uh, possibly even more than that out of a single charge. All right, guys, that's it for the Bolt Energy 51 volt, 160 amp hour lithium golf cart battery installation in an EasyGo TXT. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We'll answer them as soon as we can. And if you have any suggestions or if we miss anything, please leave that in the comments below as well. We always like to learn new things. We're not know-it-alls, so we appreciate that. We do have these batteries for sale on our website and you can also order by phone. So call us during business hours at Palmetto Battery Pros. We can assist you with the purchasing process. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. We uh, have more lithium unboxing videos coming out. We have installation videos coming out, different types of batteries, different types of applications. Uh, so yeah, we hope to see you next time. We appreciate you watching. Have a great one.